Hi guys, welcome to the Looters Behind the Scenes. Uh, now, if you haven't watched Looters yet, be sure to check it out at this link. Cool. Now, um, in this video, we're going to have a quick look at some of the effects with Looters, have a look at the costumes, we're going to have a little bit of a look at some deleted scenes and um, just other fun and games that were involved with it. So the initial idea for Looters started about a year ago. We were sort of six months into our channel and we wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, up to that point, all of our videos involved guns and sort of shootouts and that sort of thing. So I wanted to try something completely different and we'd always been big lovers of RPGs. I in particular loved all the SNES RPGs like Secret of Mana and Link to the Past and uh, the Final Fantasy games and when we first started talking about this video I was playing a lot of Skyrim so it was just a natural fit. So way back when we were shooting the Call of Duty Ghost video um, we were working with the guys from Task Force Taipan and on set between takes we got the chatting and it turned out that they were heavily involved with live action roleplay or LARPing also, they had a whole array of medieval and sort of fantasy costumes. So it seemed like a perfect fit to get those guys back involved and um, get them on to the uh, Looters video. We also enlisted the help of our good friend Will Bayless, otherwise known as Tiny Little Granger. Um, he's a musician based here in Adelaide and you can check out his music here and here and here. He's involved in a lot of bands, so um, check them all out. They're all really awesome and um, you're going to love them. So Will had played a lot of minor roles in our films. He was always willing to play a goon and die and fall over multiple times for the cause. I think I'm just going to be a goon getting shot um, straight away, I suppose. Multiple times. With absolutely no accuracy on my shooting. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Which is how it goes. That works. That's how it works. That's how goons are trained to shoot around the target, um, I'm sure they must be. And we thought it was about time that he got his own leading role. So um, with this character of the wizard, I thought he was a perfect fit. He's got a great sense of humor. I knew he would bring something really awesome to the role. Do you think you can find a use for one of those? You can have that too if you want. Wizards don't need these kind of brute force things. One of the things I always found frustrating about Skyrim was the whole weight system. Um, you know, you're out on an adventure, picking up loot, and eventually you become overweight, you can't run, and it always seemed to happen at the most inconvenient of times. So we definitely thought there was a lot of fun that we could have with that, and a lot of comedy gold just waiting to be explored. Sweet, sweet gold. Mwah. The other good thing we found with the idea of looting is that while it's big, the idea of looting was a big feature in Skyrim, it's universal across a lot of games. Um, most games these days include some form of looting, so it just seemed like something that while was specific to Skyrim, would speak to gamers across the board, even if they hadn't played Skyrim. So like most films, not everything made the final cut. When it came to cutting it down, we found that the battle sequence was a little bit lengthy in its first few edits. What we decided to do was cut out some of the scenes that had been shot on the first day of filming. Um, we were still finding our feet, this being the first sort of medieval sword play sort of film that we had shot. So some of the stuff from the first day was a little bit rough. The weather was also better on the second day, so it was an obvious choice. Good job, man. We nailed him. So uh, I think the only thing to do now is loot. Right up. <laughs> so we had Task Force Taipan playing the goons, and we had Helen playing the goon leader, and they all had their own costumes. But for our two lead characters, we wanted very specific costumes, so we had to make them ourselves. Hey, I'm Nick, and I will be talking about the costumes we made for this film. So once we were officially in production, I put my hand up to do the costumes for the two lead characters. I'm not a costume maker or prop maker by trade, but I do enjoy learning these things and using my hands and being crafty. So Shanks wanted two very different characters for this film. The first was going to be my character, the warrior character who was a, you know, a knight who's very cold and hard and solid. And we contrasted that with Will's character, the sorcerer or wizard type. We wanted him to appear far more expressive and sprightly and witty and we wanted him to feel like a smarter character. We kept going back to this Bugs Bunny Elmer Fudd reference for the characters and it's not quite evident on screen so much visually but I used that relationship as inspiration for the characters as I was building the costumes. For example my character appears quite round and hard whereas Will's character is much more soft in his appearance and a lot sharper. 
So when I was designing the night outfit, I wanted something that was equal parts armor, fabric, yeah, a bit of leather, mostly for movement's sake, and because I didn't think I was quite up to the challenge of creating a full suit of armor. So I used EVA foam for the armor, I used the general, just any kind of fabric I could find underneath it, and then we used this cheap pleather stuff for the leather. So I follow a lot of cosplayers online, and one guy in particular does a lot of great instructionals on how to. He goes by Old Trenchy, I reckon you should check him out. I learnt this great method from him where you paint your armor how you want it, basic grey and stuff, and then with an the aluminium colour spray paint, you just kind of lightly go over it, and it gives everything that kind of metallic shine and shimmer. And an important thing to talk about would be the weathering we did. Any fabric was darkened and matted and cut and ripped and just putting black paint over it and smudging it in. Any kind of battle damage or weathering just sells it that much more. This is quite aged now as well, you can see the original foam coming through, but I don't quite mind it. So I do proper lines like this with the scalpel, but then I'd put lots of little damage marks in, scratches and scuffs, and I'd also put blacky brown smudges in, it just richens it up a bit. The same goes for Will's costume. Once that was finished, we just caked that in dirt and mud and a light coat of black spray paint to grunge it up a bit. So there's a lot of glue and stuff keeping most of this together. But what's really keeping it from falling apart is a lot of the hidden ziplocks, which you couldn't see during the filming. Given how much running around and sword swinging I had to do, it was really important that it didn't collapse on itself. Um, you might notice all these little pins everywhere. These are just those craft store pushpin things. I'm not really sure what they're called. Pushpins probably isn't right. But I thought they made a great little detail throughout most of it. Just this little like nails and bolts. So for Will's armor, I generally did the same thing. Focusing more on different shades of brown and giving it a shine. And you can see there's more push pins in here. It's aged a little bit since we shot, but you know, it's all there. So I really should thank my girlfriend for stepping in. She helped me create Will's costume with all the sewing and whatnot. Uh, that costume was based on kind of a leafy design, very green, more sharp points in it. Uh, what really sells it to me is all the belts that we put on at the end. It just created a real uh, lived, aged, layered look that I thought was really cool. So once we were in the costume, uh, it actually helped me and Will quite a lot develop little character traits and little bits. We kind of decided between the two of us that I'd been playing the game a lot longer than Will had, but that we were at a similar level, which said a lot about our play styles, whereas he was the strategic blaster very smart about how he used his weapons. I was just a brute who only knew one way to level up. And the last costume we put together, which we did quite quickly, was for Andrew Shanks's giant role. Um, that was just a lot of reused fabrics, ones you would have seen before. You actually can see my uh, my Game of Thrones cape that I created was uh, Shanks's loincloth, which I won't be using anymore. But mostly that costume was just old junk kind of wrapped around him scarcely, and a lot of dirt makeup. We just covered that guy in brown mud. And on his feet in particular, because they get those cool shots at the end. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Dan and this is Bonnie and we're going to talk a little bit about the process after the edit. Uh, so I wouldn't usually start with the grade, but being shot over two different days, it was very inconsistent footage. Um, one day was broad sunlight, the other day was quite overcast. So the obvious colour reference was Skyrim the game. Um, but I was also watching the show Vikings at the time, and I really liked the colours of that. The location we used for the film was in the middle of the bush. These ruins were surrounded by luscious green bushes and trees. Both the game and the TV show have a much more desaturated look. So to achieve the final look, it was a matter of desaturating isolated colours and crushing the luminance of the green. So the VFX process was a lot of fun for this film. Being set in a mystical world full of magic and knights and medieval warfare, uh, there's no right and wrong way to do things, there's sort of no benchmark for what magic looks like. So we got to have, have a lot of fun with this. The general effects was based around a lot of lightning, particles, noise, um, a lot of fire and sparks for the battles. We found just a lot of impacts and smoke and sparks just helped to sell the scenes. One of our favourite shots from the film is what we've dubbed Will's Weather Blast, which you can see behind me. Um, this is where Will sucks the power from the skies to charge up his staff with this lightning ball which he then shoots at the warlock. The brief Shanks gave me for this shot was that he wants it to change the weather. From the way Will moves his staff around in the sky in this big circular motion, I picture him building this big orb of energy which he can then shoot at Hal. 
I wasn't totally sure how I was going to achieve this, but I had a quick look at Andrew Kramer's tutorial on creating something similar, making some sort of magic orb using the polar coordinates effect. So as well as the polar coordinates technique, I used a CC lens filter on it to give it that real glassy sort of look. But as well as that, I placed some very bouncy electricity into the mix, and then placed a particle generator right in the center just to give it that little bit more. And I used the trap code star glow effect to really give it that shine. Again, being magic, it's totally open to interpretation, so I selected a bit of a pinky purple colour for the weather blast and chucked it in the scene. And I knew I wanted a real whipping motion with this orb, like, you can see Will brings the staff down, so I wanted the orb to flick down after it, bounce off the ground and come back up before finally firing out. So for this it was all about the animation curves, just making sure it came into each point quite sharply and then eased on out. And then to really sell the weather change, we replaced the sky with some nice moody storm clouds, added some lightning, optical flares, and then it was starting to feel pretty good. I rendered everything out with a layer of noise over it as well, just to blend these effects in. So to sell the clouds a bit more, I added a turbulent displace and animated the evolution properties. <laughs> The rest of the film's full of a bit more subtle effects, like the text that pops up. We made sure that was as close as possible to the actual Skyrim text, just to really sell the joke, because that, that was an important part of the gag. We also chucked some 3D weapons into the looting scene, just to sell the gag a bit more, and just to add a bit of variance, so we weren't, didn't just have the same swords popping up all the time. Other than that, we had to comp in Shanks as the giant, added a few 3D trees and everything just to sell that as well. There's a lot of things I'd do differently next time, but I, I learned a lot of little tricks along the way. So as you can see, we had a lot of fun with this. So as you can see, we had a lot of fun with this project. Um, it was a nice change from the usual type of action scenes that we do that are just full of, you know, that are full of gunfights and explosions. Thanks. <laughs> so that's it from us, guys. Hope you enjoyed the looters behind the scenes. Um, we've got plenty more videos coming your way very soon, so please stay tuned. So like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and please share our films and our channel with like-minded friends. Adios. Come on!